Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about super dwarf reticulated pythons and other snakes too, but specifically I guess I'm mentioning super dwarfs. I think that this topic is really specifically more important to them than any other snake that I keep. So we're talking about feeding mode. When a snake gets into feeding mode and being able to kind of understand that, understand what that is and what you need to do and how you need to be careful. Because like most of my boas, I can go in, I can just go, and I've just been feeding. See that? I just I grabbed a boa. Now let's go in again. Let's see if uh, how many snakes I can do this with before I get nipped. You see, I go in with another one of my boas. Woo! Look at that. Just go in, touch, grab. Okay, let's go to the next one. Here we go. <laughs> well, let's go down to the next one. <laughs> Here we go. This is dangerous, Matt. You're risking yourself. Here we go. Look at that. See, we did it again. Now the next one I'm not going to do because guess what it is? It's a super dwarf reticulated python. So I have my handy dandy hook. And I actually like this part more because this part, like, would you want to bite onto that? I wouldn't want to bite that. So it's like here is a nice chewy toy basically so that if the snake does end up like coming out and biting, it bites the rubber, no one gets hurt, no teeth get crushed or whatever. Because biting this would hurt a lot more. So I actually like to use the tail end of the hook. So, there's a bonus tip for you. Because we're full of those. So now I'm going to go into the, uh, the bottom tank. And I'm going to take out Ivy. And then we're going to have a discussion about feeding responses, uh, reading your animals, understanding them. We're going to talk about uh, snake personality, feelings, emotions, and all that stuff too, because we haven't done that in a while. I've been doing a lot of silly videos lately, and uh, now we got to, you know, get back into what this channel is really about, and that is to teach, educate, and show you stuff. So, Ivy is not in feeding mode right now, which is interesting because I've been feeding some snakes. So, lots of time when they are in feeding mode. <sighs> okay, I'm going to show you guys. Today was feeding day and I filmed myself feeding some snakes. So you're going to see videos of me feeding snakes while this video is going on. To help keep your attention. Hopefully they don't distract you too much. But basically, I let her know that I'm taking her out by touching her. And she's not moving. So she's either like... I don't think she's sleeping, but she's in a, she's in a very chill mode and it's yeah it's a good thing so now that I've let her know I'm here I'm gonna go in can you even see her I'm gonna go in and grab her okay okay now she turned her head towards me and was like hey so now I just gotta make sure that I didn't just like wake her up and now she's thinking she's gonna get fed so I wanna be careful I wanna be gentle I wanna be slow and I wanna make sure she knows I'm coming to get her and once I've grabbed her, I put my stick down, and I take her out, and here we go. This is Ivy. If you've seen my reticulated python videos or super dwarf videos, you'll have already met her and seen her before. So now let's go into the living room. And welcome to the living room. So many people say, you know, snakes don't have feelings, they don't do this, they're, they're just like, you know, they don't have feelings. So... <laughs> okay. Calm down, Matthew. Relax. It's okay. It's just your friends. I was reading some articles this morning on snakes, emotions, reptile emotions, and stuff like that. And I came across one article that I found very insightful or interesting. So I'm going to read it to you. It's going to be story time. Okay? So it was from 2011, and it's called Reptile Emotions. It's from the Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Services, and uh, this is what it says. When thinking about reptiles, the image that comes to mind on most people 
vary from garter snakes slithering through the grass to the lizards of Jurassic proportions roaming through the earth. The idea of bonding with such creatures may seem creepy or even impossible, yet some people insist that their reptiles know them and enjoy being with them. Can reptiles feel or portray emotions? Generally, reptiles do demonstrate basic emotions, which I like to always say. According to Dr. Sharman's Hops, Hopes, Hops, clinical assistant professor at Texas, blah, 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 the two main things are fear and aggression, which we like to call defensiveness. Is it defensiveness? Or I, I forget what the word that we use, but it may also demonstrate pleasure when stroked or offered food. Hmm. A snake that is feeling aggressive, defensive, whatever, it's their words, not mine, okay? May warn you with a hiss, states Dr. Hops. This can occur when you are forcing attention on the snake, and if you persist, they may strike out. Typically, snakes hiss or coil when they are feeling hostile, but most pet snakes are not aggressive animals unless threatened. A reptile that is feeling fear may simply try to get away, and most of the time if they can get away, that's what they'll do, they'll try and run away. But it can also exhibit similar actions to aggression. For this reason, it is a good idea to keep handling sessions with a new reptile to a minimum until it gets used to you. Otherwise, you may scare it into striking at you as a perceived threat. It is better to have a good session without upsetting the animal that lasts two minutes than a longer session trying to force a reptile to accept you. A more controversial emotion in reptiles is the concept of pleasure or even love. Many feel that they have not developed this emotion as it does not naturally benefit them. However, most reptiles do seem to recognize people who frequently handle and feed them. I don't know if it is love, says Dr. Hops, but lizards and tortoises appear to like some people more than others. They also seem to show the most emotions, as many lizards do appear to show pleasure when being stroked. Another interesting fact is that many reptiles lay their eggs and leave their young to fend for themselves. Such a, some, such as prehensile-tailed skinks, form family groups and protect their young. Female alligators also stay with their young and will guard them for up to six months, teaching them survival skills and vocalizing with them through a series of grunts. Whether this is due to a survival instinct or concern for their individual offspring is unknown. When it comes to interactions with humans, some reptiles do seem to enjoy their company. A tortoise that enjoys being petted might stick out its neck or close its eyes and become still and calm during the interaction. The same is true of lizards. It's also true of snakes. <laughs> Iguanas have individual personalities that can vary from tranquil and laid back to aggressive and dominating. The latter can be very difficult to live with and care for. The more calm iguanas tend to bond with their person but may only endure handling by that individual. It is rare that there is an iguana that is social. It is the rare iguana that is social with strangers. Mind you, like in Ecuador, all the iguanas <laughs> seem pretty social. They're like birds coming and wanting food, though. Uh, many reptile owners believe that their personal reptiles do recognize the good intentions they have towards them. Others deem that their cold-blooded dependents only tolerate them when they have to and would prefer to be left alone. By careful observation and handling your reptiles, you can determine which are more social and which may not be so impressed with having a human best friend. Okay, so that's our article. <laughs> Understanding the reptile's behavior, your snake's behavior, every single one has different personalities. Okay, so you see this snake? No, um, just calm, doesn't really do much. But now when we go to this snake, This is Naomi, and she's more, she's more curious. Usually when I open her up, it's also morning, so. Usually when I open her up, she comes and she looks, and she's, she's a lot more aware of things. But 
she's being shy now today too. But one of the most important things for you to know is the difference between their, their moods. And when they're in feed mode especially, that's the most important mode to be aware of. Because if you go in and grab a snake, like today, if I just went in and grabbed Ivy, I'm pretty sure I'd be fine. But if she was in feeding mode, I would have opened the drawer and she would have come out and struck it. And it wouldn't be because she's scared of me or the flighty type of thing. It would have been because she thought I had food. And often snakes are very reactive. So they'll react to certain things. But then there's some snakes that aren't like that. There's some snakes that I can put food in there with them and they won't even eat it. I have to wiggle it and get them to... To eat it so that's fun there's also some snakes that will be very curious so they'll kind of come out looking at you and leopard geckos will do this too like they'll kind of it looks like they have a smile they're like food is there food <laughs> or it's like what's going on so some sometimes they will come towards you and they want to they want to know what's going on and other times they'll come towards you and they think you have food and those two modes, the curious mode and the feeding mode, almost look the same. So you have to be really careful, especially with the super dwarfs, because they, they'll they just kind of look at you, and you might think they're saying, oh, hey, it wants to play, it's playtime, let's, let's come out and play. But they could also just be looking at you like, is it food? And lunge out you. So if a snake is feeling a little bit more defensive, you'll see them kind of coil back. Because if they're stretched out, they can't come out at you as much. But if they're coiled back, they can come out at you. But this is a lot more true with like other snakes. With retics, they can just shoot out. They can just shoot forward and you'll see them do it just like the, the black tail Kribo. So I think I'm gonna open the video with the black tail Kribo like flying out. And, and that that's what some of these snakes can do. So you have to, if you're not sure, get the stick, get the hook, and uh, make sure every single time that you go towards your super dwarfs or retics that you turn off that food response. That you make sure that they're not in that food response because that's where people are going to make the biggest mistakes. They're going to get bit when they're feeding if they're not careful, and they're going to bit if they, they're going to get bit if they go in to grab without letting them know that they're going to grab. Out of all the animals that I keep, these would be a lot more for people that are more experienced. And they are my favorite snakes. They're very, you get more out of them. You see them kind of thinking. But it's just the, the one thing that you really have to watch out for is their feeding mode. You have to always turn off that feeding response and let them know they're not being fed. And even once you've turned off that feeding response, sometimes they're uh, they're ready to go so another thing another thing to kind of look for is sometimes they'll move a lot and their tongue will be flicking a lot and that's usually a better sign but what I find they'll do is they'll kind of they'll stop they'll kind of like look and when they kind of do that that's when you have to you know be careful because it's just like they might be like is that food I'm gonna be quiet and whoo bam right it's almost like they're like they're drugged or something it's like they have like bloodshot eyes or something they're, they're like they kind of open their eyes and they're like is that food is that food i'm gonna get it <laughs> it really is um it really is so special to uh no come on let's focus on your face yes okay i want to show you ivy a little bit better we got a better camera now, coming to you in 4K. Ivy is a 75% super dwarf. Het for purple albino or white albino, we don't know yet, so. Hopefully white, because it'd be really cool to get some lavenders and fun stuff. Hopefully 2020 is the year that we end up getting some super dwarf babies. Because last year I got all excited. I thought we were going to get some and we didn't. 
But it's okay, the snakes are bigger, more eggs, more options. Yes. We got to focus on... Is it coming back? Is it coming back? No, it's focusing on my face. So now this is the next day. And you can see... She's had some food. She's very aware. She's coming to see what's going on. She's curious. After they eat is another time that you want to be careful. We don't want to mess with her today because she will feel a little bit more insecure after a meal. But she is she's a little bit calmer. Calypso is calming down. Now let's look at Nintendo and see if he comes flying out at us. <laughs> For the most part, retics are usually pretty good. Yeah, see? See, now he's not in feeding mode as much. He's just... He might be a little bit defensive because he just ate. But he's not coming out trying to fly and get some food. <laughs> if you want to watch more Super Dwarf retics, learn more about them, see more of them, click on the uh, first video. Otherwise... Check out the other one. Remember to like, subscribe. It helps a lot and I appreciate it.